Number 49, Professional Application. Ernest Rutherford, the first New Zealander to be awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, demonstrated that nuclei were very small and dense by scattering helium-4 nuclei from gold-197 nuclei. The energy from the incoming helium nucleus was 8 times 10 to the minus 13 joules, and the masses of helium and gold nuclei were 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms and 3.29 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms, respectively. Note that their mass ratio is 4 to 197. Letter A. If a helium nucleus scatters to an angle of 120 degrees during an elastic collision with a gold nucleus, uh, calculate the helium nucleus's final speed and the final velocity, magnitude, and direction of the gold nucleus. All right. Uh, so this one's a doozy. Now, what we have to think about here is there's... By the way, there's probably several ways to solve this problem. The way I'm interpreting it right now, I'm seeing a particular path. Um, I think it's the easiest, but it does require a little math. Um, so first, I want to uh, point out that they did tell us the incoming energy. All right, And they also told us that it is an elastic collision. Therefore, I know that there's conservation of kinetic energy, right? So why don't we just start with that? Let's start by writing the energy you know, before the collision should equal the energy, the kinetic energy after the collision. All right. Now, the kinetic energy before the collision is purely coming from the helium nucleus, uh, right? Uh, the gold is assumed uh, is assumed to not be moving before the collision. So therefore, all, the, all of the uh, kinetic energy before the collision is coming from the helium nucleus. Okay? So I'm just going to leave this alone. So that's just kinetic energy before the collision. We know where to find this number. And uh, it will then equal the kinetic energy after the collision. Now, after the collision happens, both the helium nucleus, as we can see here in the bottom picture here, the helium nucleus will scatter at an angle of 120 degrees. And the gold nucleus will probably scatter somewhere in here. Okay, so they're both going to have a velocity. Therefore, they're both going to have kinetic energy. So then I'm going to say that the kinetic energy of the um, helium, which I called gold, uh, excuse me, which I called number one, um, after the collision, plus then the kinetic energy of the gold nucleus uh, after the collision. All right. So now why don't we expand on these two things, okay? Since I know this term, I'm not going to really expand on it. I don't think it's uh, quite necessary. I mean, we can if we want, um, but I'm just going to leave it alone. So kinetic energy before the collision will equal then one half times the mass of the helium atom multiplied by the uh, velocity of that helium atom after the collision squared plus one half times the mass of the uh, gold, right? Multiplied by the velocity of the gold after the collision squared. Okay, so here I have an equation. How many unknowns do we have? We have two unknowns, right? We have this unknown and we have this unknown. Okay, so now let's think of another equation that we might be able to use here, all right? And uh, actually, I think it was number 29 maybe, the problem that I, I did in this chapter where I developed a relative uh, velocity equation for um, elastic collisions, I'm going to use that formula here. Okay, so if you want to if you want to detail how this came about, check out video number 29 in chapter 8 here. All right, but the relative velocity equation was V1B minus V1A will equal uh, V, oops, not V1A, sorry, V1b minus V2b, I should know it, right? I came up with it before. Uh, v, V1a, excuse me, oh my goodness. V2a minus V2b. Sorry about that. V1a. This is the relative velocity equation, okay? So what do I know? Well, uh, do I know the initial velocity of the helium atom? Well, you might say, well, no, I don't, but we do because we do know the kinetic energy, right? Remember that kinetic energy is equal to this. So for helium right before the collision should be equal to the mass, should be equal to one half times the mass of helium multiplied by the velocity before the collision of helium squared. All right, so we actually do know these values. So we, we do know this value as well. We can solve for it. And right? just keep that in mind. So we know this, the... Uh, Velocity of the gold atom here was zero. So this whole term just drops out. And these are what we're looking for, 
right? So really my equation now works down to be V1B, which I know will equal V2A minus V1A, okay? Now, here we go. We have two equations here, two unknowns, right? I don't know V2A or V1A, and I don't know V1A or V2A. So guess what? All we got to do is plug one in for the other and solve now. So I'm going to add this term on over, V1A, on over to the left. So we're going to have something that looks like this, V2A, right? will equal then V1B plus V1A. Okay, now I'm going to take this value here and plug it in for V2A in that equation. Okay, remember, I know V1B. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so now I'm going to have kinetic energy before the collision will equal then. Uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Just to simplify, you notice how we have a half in common amongst everybody? I'm going to bring that, you know, I'm going to take that on out and then uh, divide out the half on this side and then divide this by half, which would be the same as multiplying it by 2. Okay, just to clean it up. So this is 2 KEB. We'll equal then M1 of V1A squared plus M2. Now in brackets, V1B plus V1A squared. So now let's just do some math. Let's square this. Okay, so let's rewrite. So 2 KEB, okay, will equal M1 V1A squared plus M2. So when we do the math in there, right, and actually if you check out video number 29, I think I did this in there too, if I remember correctly, um, the shortcut here. So V1B, which right, is just foiling squared, plus 2 times V1B, V1A, plus V1A squared. Okay. Now what I'm going to look to do is I'm going to look to... Um, I'm going to look to distribute. I was just thinking about skipping a step, not skipping a step, but doing it mentally. Um, basically, what I'm going to look to do now is to distribute this term on across to these three. Okay, so let me actually do that next. All right. And so we have now 2KEB is equal to M1V1A squared plus then we have M2V1B squared plus 2 times m2, v1b, v1a, plus m2, v1a squared. Okay, now basically what you have to realize is that we know everything except for v1a in this equation. Oops, except for v1a. Okay, so these are the terms I don't know, just one term. Okay, now what this looks like, re realize that you have a squared term, Okay, you have a squared term, a non-squared term, right, raised to the first power, and then a term without a variable in it at all. This looks strikingly similar to quadratic equation. So now our job is to try to set this up into a quadratic equation. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two, this and this. Okay, they have a common factor, therefore I can pull that out. All right, so basically let me write, I'm going to write a zero don't worry about this term for right now. I'm just going to write a zero here, for, okay? You'll see what I'm going to do with it in a second. So basically now it becomes M1 plus M2 because I pulled out a common V1A squared, okay? Next thing I notice is here is my uh, term with the variable raised to the first power. So that I'm going to write next. So plus 2 M2 V1B V1A. And then I realize now that I can combine these two, right? These values have no unknowns in them. These are actual numbers, right? So I'm going to combine them by subtracting 2KEB over onto the left-hand side, okay? So now basically, now basically, uh, what I'm going to have here is M2, V1B, V1B, Right, V1B squared minus 2KEB. Okay, now here's the equation. This is it. Okay, this equation right down here on the bottom. All right, that's the quadratic equation, basically. And remember that this term right here, I'll write it in red. V1A 
All right, is the squared term. Here's the non-squared term. And then this term at the end has no coefficient to it. Okay, so basically we have this as, if I had to think about my A, B, and C terms, right, as you should be familiar with with your quadratics, I can write them on the side over here. So why don't I do that? I'm gonna write my, my A term is going to be M1 plus M2. My B term is going to be 2M2V1B. And then my C term is going to be M2V1B squared minus 2KEB. Okay, and every all I know everything. I know the masses. I know, remember, we said that we can find the initial velocity by thinking about this equation. Why don't we solve that quickly so we have it? So how what would we have to do here? We would do, or we gotta get rid of this. So it becomes 2k e. Let me just write b, okay, uh, divided by the mass right of helium, which was one. That that equals v1 uh, b squared. But remember, I got a square root to get rid of the square there. So that's my term, okay. So now what I'm going to do is you can do one of two things: either um, you know use the quadratic equation. Uh, you know, x is equal to negative b. In this case, it's v1a is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You can use that, or you can program the quadratic function in your calculator and then just plug in the a, b's, and c's. And that's what I'm going to do here. All right, so for a, remember, a is m1 plus m2. Okay, so I'm going to plug that into the calculator for a. All right, so m1 is 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27 plus... The M2 was 3.29 times 10 to the minus 25. Good. Let's plug in B. So we get 2 times now M2, which is 3.29 times uh, 10 to the minus 25th, times V1B, which remember V1B is this whole thing. And the reason why I'm plugging everything in exactly as I see it is because these numbers are probably going to be pretty close. So I, I got to be pretty accurate. All right, otherwise the rounding can really mess it up. So now it's going to be multiplied by square root of 2 times the kinetic energy, which was 8 times 10 to the minus 13. Remember, that was found down here. Okay, that was given to us in the problem. And then divide that by the mass of helium. And the mass of helium was 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27. Close those parentheses. And that's your B value. And then C would be now m2, so 3.29 times 10 to the minus 25, uh, times v1b squared. Now realize that v1b squared up here, right, it would just be the opposite. Get rid of this uh, square root sign and put the square back over there. So just be what's under the square root sign here, okay? So that's going to be now uh, 2 times 8 times 10 to the minus 13, uh, divided by then, uh, M1, which was 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27. And then minus 2 times the kinetic energy. So uh, 8 point, so 2 times 8 point, uh, excuse me, 8.00 times 10 to the negative 13. And then hit enter. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. So we got two answers, obviously. So let me write the, so V1A, oops, V1A will equal, we get two values here. Now they come out to be negative, okay? So negative uh, one point, I'm, I'm gonna give a fairly four, let's do 1.486, that's probably good enough, times 10 to the, what do we got? Seven, okay? And we also get another answer of V1A, right? Because it spits out to negative 1.5, four, seven, six, et cetera, times 10 to the seventh. Okay, now which one do we choose? Well, let me, let me actually uh, go over here again, okay? Let me erase this again, and let me solve that for, uh, let me just solve that for uh, V1B again. So it should have been square root of two times, two times the kinetic energy, right, of helium, which was that before, but divided by the uh, mass of helium there. So actually plug that into the calculator. So second square root, two times eight times 10 to the minus 13, 
and divide it by uh, M1, which is 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27. Isn't that interesting? What'd you get? So actually you got the same magnitude as this number over here, okay? Literally the same exact number, all right? So V1B over here, so basically V1A, okay, could, could not be this value, all right? Because it's literally the same exact value um, as, as, excuse me, as uh, the uh, velocity before the collision even happened. Now, if that was the case, if the velocity of helium before the collision is the exact same as after the collision, then it could have never hit a uh, hit the gold, right? Uh, because the energy had to have been conserved. So I know to reject this answer, okay? So basically, this is the answer, and what's important is the magnitude, not necessarily the sign, okay? So what I'm going to do here is just get rid of the negative sign, because I don't need it. It's just a function of the math. So this is the answer. V1A is 1.486 or so. I mean, you know, one considering sig figs, I'm going to write it over here. 1.49 times 10 to the seventh meters per second. So that answers that question. Well, actually, that's I wrote it under V1B, but that's V1A. So let me get rid of the question mark here. I can get rid of both of them, actually. And this should be... 1.49 times 10 to the seventh meters per second. So that's one answer. Okay, I also know the velocity before. Let me just make the box a little bigger. All right, we also know the velocity before. We found that to be, what was it, 1.55 or so times 10 to the seventh meters per second. So notice it should have slowed down a little bit because it made it collided. Okay, and now can we find V2A? Of course we can, right? Of course we can. So now we can find V2A by using this formula, okay? We can find it by using this formula. Or actually this one, we already solved for it, okay? So let's do that. Now here's the thing, you probably wanna use, you know, the most accurate values you have in order to find it. So remember V2A, I'll write it up here, V2A, is equal to V1B. Now we just found that over here, right? We, we rounded 1.55. Let me use the more exact number, which would be 1.5476 times 10 to the seventh. And then subtract from, uh, excuse me, add to that now, right? And this is where the uh, negative sign though is important. Okay, so the negative sign that got spit out of this equation, in terms of your answer, you can frame it as being positive. Okay, but in terms of the math, all right, you can't, when you give your answer, you've got to keep this as a negative, all right? So now it's going to be plus a negative 1.486 times 10 to the seventh, okay? And then what do we get with that math? So let's see. So it's going to be uh, that value minus... One four eight six zero oh, five zero oh, four. I'm going to go all the way, right. So now we get the value of being. Where do I want to write this? There's barely any room, right? I'll write it over here. Actually, let me just erase up here now, since you know what the math is. So I'll just write the answer. It's going to be considering rounding. It's going to be six point one six. Six point one six times ten to the uh, seventh. No, excuse me. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, sorry, times 10 to the fifth, okay, meters per second. So that's V2A. So now let me go back over to here, and I'm going to plug that on in for V2A. So 6.16 times 10 raised to the fifth meters per second. So that's the other answer, okay? Now they want us to also uh, find the direction. All right, um, for the gold. So we just found, we found the uh, v uh, value, right? But now we have to find the direction. So I'm gonna erase everything on this page. I feel bad because it looks so nice, um, but I need some space. All right, so let me actually, I'm gonna erase all this stuff over here. I'll leave most of that main work up, okay? So let's just erase some of this stuff. All right. So erase this, get a little room. 
Okay. So now uh, let's calculate the direction. And in order to do that now, we actually do need to now look at it in terms of uh, momentums. All right. Now we should only need to look at it in terms of one of them. Um, so I'm going to try to do this a little fast. Uh, not fast, but a little quickly. So let's look at, um, so remember, conservation of momentum means that the momentum before is equal to the momentum after. Knowing that I have some scattering going on after, right, I'm going to think about X and Y components. So therefore, I'm going to do this, let's say, for the pure X. Okay, now before the collision, there's two objects, and therefore, the momentum of the first object before the collision in the X direction plus the momentum of the second object before the collision in the X direction should equal the momentum of the first object after the collision uh, in the x direction plus then the momentum of the second object after the collision in the x direction. All right. Um, I could also do this for y as well. And actually, I'm thinking about it. Y would probably be a little easier. The reason why is because the initial uh, conditions have no y components, right? The helium is moving purely horizontally. The aluminum, uh, the aluminum, I keep calling it aluminum. <laughs> I know aluminum's AL, AU, gold. Um, I know the gold is not moving at all, and therefore it has no Y component. So actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to look at this from the Y perspective. Okay. So instead of writing the X's, which is totally fine, we can do it that way. I think it's just going to be a little shorter doing it, looking at it from the Y perspective. All right. Now let's try to, what's the Y component of the uh, helium before? Well, it's zero, like we just said. And for the gold, it's also zero. So that would be P1AY plus P2AY. Right now, solving you know one for the other, we realize that we can get something like P1AY being equal to uh, negative P2, right, A sub Y. Okay, so now let's look at the Y components uh, of each. Okay, now notice here is one of the vectors. Okay, we now know the magnitude of this vector. Okay, remember this vector represented of V1A, because it's after the collision, and they told us it was 120 degrees. Um, so I do know this. Uh, I'm able to find the Y component, right? I can assume that this angle in here is going to be uh, 60, right? Because it's a straight line, so it's 180. And now this, this component would be the V1AY, okay? So looking at it, it looks like sine, right? So sine of 60 will equal the opposite v one V1AY all over a V1A. Solving it for V1AY, I realize we get V1A times the sine of 60. Come on, there we go. Okay, so I get this value. So for V1AY, I can plug that in. Okay, what I'm going to do here is let me expand on the momentum so we can see where they are. So remember, the P1 is really, P is just a function of MV. So since this is for the first object, I can write it as M1. V1AY, right, is equal to negative M2 uh, V2AY. Uh, V2AY. Okay. So now um, I'm going to substitute this term on in for, isn't this problem fun? I'm going to substitute this on in for that uh, V1AY, okay, because they're equivalent. So now it's going to be M1 times v1a sine of 60, okay, will now equal negative uh, m2. Now, I, I know, you know, I, I, I uh, am not able to find this y component, right? Because I don't know the angle with respect to gold after the scattering. So what I need to do is I need to now uh, create my equation just like I did here. Notice the relationship V1AY was equal to V1A multiplied by sine of 60. Remember, sine is always correlated to uh, the y's. And so now I'm going to do the same thing. This is V2AY, so now it's just going to be multiplied by V2A sine of theta, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, so now what's the goal? I only have one unknown. Remember, I know V1A. Right, we found it over here. And I also know V2A. We found it over here. So now we can just solve for the theta. Okay, thinking about the math, I'd have to divide this on out and over to the other side. Right, and then um, 
I would take the inverse sine, right? So the equation should look something like this, that theta is gonna equal sine to the minus one of M1 V1A sine of 60, sine of 60. I know I'm running out of space here. Let me try to condense it a little more. Actually, let me move the theta over. Sorry, guys. So theta is equal to uh, sine minus one of now M1 V1A sine of 60 all over negative M2 V2A. Close it up. Okay, let's just now plug it into the calculator. All right, I'm gonna try not to use the rounded numbers if I still have them available. All right, and if you do, it's not a big deal. It'd just be off slightly. So let's do inverse sine of now M1, which is 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27, uh, times V1A, which I'm gonna do a little more exact number, 418. 60504, all right, then times the sine of 60, divided by then negative M2, which is 3.29, 3.29 times 10 to the minus 25th. Oop, don't forget the parenthesis, almost forgot that. Insert parenthesis, and then times uh, V2A, which V2A is gonna be 615906. 615, uh, sorry, 960, what am I talking about? Close those parentheses, and there it is. So the theta now works out to be, I'm gonna write it up here, the theta now works out to be negative 25.1, 25.1 degrees. Now, where is that on my picture? All right, well, according to my picture, I'm gonna put it in red, according to my little graph here, right? The negative sign means below the x-axis, so 25 degrees below the x-axis. So here's the... That would be the vector. So here's the 25.1 degrees, and this is the way the gold will be deflected. Okay, so this is the deflection uh, pattern. This would be V2A. Oh my goodness. But wait, there is more. Part B. What is the final kinetic energy of the helium nucleus? So um, in order to find that out, Right, well, we're going to be using a very similar equation uh, to this, okay? Um, but instead of the initial, right, or before the collision, we're going to be looking at it now after. So basically, um, what I'll write over here is I'll write kinetic energy, right, of helium after the collision will be equal to one half times the mass of helium multiplied by the velocity of helium after the collision squared. Since I'm running out of room, um, let's just... I'm just gonna write the answer, okay? Uh, and plug in the numbers, but I'm just gonna plug it into the calculator. So it's 0.5, right, times the mass of helium, which is 6.68 times 10 to the minus 27, then multiplied by the uh, final velocity of helium. And let's use the more exact number over here to calculate that. So it's gonna be 1.486 times 10 to the seventh squared. And we get a value of about 7.38 or so, right? 7.38 times 10 to the negative 13, and that's in joules. All right, so thank God B wasn't that bad, right? All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me. Um, hopefully this video helped. As you can see, there's a lot of concepts uh, in this question. It's a very, very challenging question, uh, but hopefully, you know, all the concepts should uh, make sense. And um, I really do hope it helped. Please remember to subscribe. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. As long as it's not as long as this. <laughs> Take care.